So with just a laptop and a door, you can truly create a masterpiece. Learning how to produce music is one of the best things you can do. It's personally changed my life beyond what I could have imagined from working with big artists to huge brands. And if I could go back in time and start again from the beginning, this is exactly what I would do. So I'm gonna break this video down into three sections. We're gonna start with the mindset, talk about the music, of course, and then we're gonna talk about the networking slash branding. The first thing I wanna talk about is mindset. So when we think about some of the best producers of all time, such as Timbaland, Dr. Dre, what makes them special? Of course, it's the music, but it's actually much more than that. They have a certain style, a flair, a taste to their music. Back in the day, Timberland's beats sounded different to other producers' beats at the same time. He was taking sounds that wasn't really used in hip hop and making it work, like taking Bollywood sounds. <laughs> and Indian music and then putting some hip hop drums underneath it and then turning them into hits. It was something different and it really stood out. Music production is all about thinking outside the box and this is where you come in because you have a unique taste, a unique perspective. So rather than just copying your favorite producer and what's already out there, be courageous enough to put your creative spin on things. So I'd say don't limit yourself to creative norms or genres. Be free and fearless in the beginning. Just experiment with different sounds, different rhythms to create something truly unique. Of course, there's some rules in music, but really rules are meant to be broken and there's really no rules. However, all this wouldn't matter if you don't get step two right, which is having patience. Look, I'm not going to lie, it does take time to develop. Rome wasn't built in a day, neither was good beats. I'm personally eight years into my beat making journey, yet I still approach it as if I'm a beginner because realistically, there's always something new to learn. It's definitely gonna take some time for you to just hone your skills in and find your sound. And honestly, there's just no substitute for that. You just need time in the game. Luckily, there is good tools available, good drum kits, good samples, like on my website, propbyocean.com, that can help you find your sound a lot quicker. But rather than getting frustrated and comparing yourself to other producers and thinking, damn, why isn't my beat slapping like that? Just understand that it does take time to get your sound, to get things sounding right. And it's gonna give you peace of mind, but trust the process, stay committed, and of course, results are gonna follow. The third mindset principle that you should have on your mind is to always be learning and always stay curious. Things in music, I'm not gonna lie, move very, very quick. There's always new tools and new technology that's being developed and being released. Even with the rise of things like AI, it's important for us to keep our minds open. Of course, everyone has their own way of doing things and you should definitely find your way of making music. But I think also it's really, really good to embrace change. Think about this, 20, 30 years ago, producers were making beats on hardware, physical equipment. But then as time went on, digital started to take over, software was being dropped, people started making beats on laptops and doors like FL Studio, Logic Pro X. So the times changed and producers who adapted survived, those who didn't, kind of got left behind. And I definitely see a kind of a similar thing happening with AI now. AI is like the hot new topic that people are talking about and even some producers are scared about, but you should definitely just be open to it, at least learn about it, see what it's about, and potentially it could become a part of your workflow. Now that we've talked about mindset, let's talk about music, which is probably one of the most important things. And if there was one thing that I could have done in the beginning that I wish I did, it would be to really truly master my door. So if you don't know, a door is a digital audio workspace. It's the software that producers use to make beats. Just like an artist uses a canvas to paint a picture, the door is our canvas. It doesn't matter if you're using FL Studio, Logic Pro X, Ableton, whatever door, you just wanna take the time to familiarize yourself and really understand its functions and its full capabilities. In the first year of making beats, I was really, really focused on just doing that, making beats, and not really learning my door too much. So I was probably using it to about 10% of its capabilities. But over the years, I've become way more technical as I've spent hours and hours in the door. And now it's easy to navigate the interface, know all the shortcuts, how to manipulate tracks, all those kind of stuff. As most likely, you're probably never gonna use your door to all those capabilities. You're gonna find like the key functions that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll probably be using like 20% to do 80% of the work. That's how it usually goes. But once you truly understand how to use your door, you can pretty much use it like a weapon, almost like it's his own separate instrument. So if I was starting again, I'll probably look through the manual, I'll probably go through a ton of tutorials, trying to understand all the shortcuts that could save me a bunch of time and speed up my workflow. I'm probably like the top 100 used functions within it. Now the next one, a lot of producers surprisingly are like 50-50 on this. But honestly, I can't see how this couldn't help your music. 
In 2017, when I first started learning how to make beats, I wanted to learn how to actually play melody. So I would spend an hour every single day learning the piano. I'm not an expert, but I definitely know the basics very, very well. And that brings me to my point that you should definitely learn some music theory. Now, I'm not saying you have to learn advanced, super difficult music theory. It's not really that difficult. I think the basics, if you understand the basics and the keys and the fundamentals, you definitely build in a good foundation for yourself. Learning just a little bit of music theory will take you a long way. It will help you to develop ideas faster and even take what's in your head and translate that into music a lot quicker and overall just help with your understanding of music. So when it comes to the basics, I would learn about scales. I'd learn about basic chords like triads. I'd learn about the number system within the scales and chord progressions and an understanding of rhythm. Try and understand how rhythm works, melody and harmony. And like I said before, that's going to help you make music that resonates a lot more. Later in this video, we're going to talk about working with musicians. But if you have time, it won't hurt taking the time to learn how to play an instrument. Now, my third point when it comes to music, and this is going to kind of contradict what I said in the beginning with mindset in the fact that you don't really want to copy people. However, when it comes to understanding music and understanding how to make beats, the fastest way to get better at making beats is to emulate your favorite producer and then create your own style. So literally just take your favorite song, listen to it a few times, maybe even drag it into your door and really study it, analyze it. How have they done the hi-hat pattern? How have they arranged the beat? How are the hi-hats rolling? You soon start to recognize patterns and figure out what they're doing. You can apply that knowledge and then kind of remix it for yourself. Now with this, remember the key thing I'm saying is emulate. Don't just literally copy. Once you have the framework, you can now break the rules and then start to do your own thing. And if you want my help with music production, check out my program, Top Tier Producer, where I show you from start to finish how to make beats. All right, let's move on to number three, which is all about networking and branding as a music producer. One thing I wish I did in the beginning that I'd just never really done too much of, that is like a key part of my production today, is collaborating and collaboration with other producers and artists. In the beginning, probably just like you, I was making beats in my room just by myself, which was good because, you know, I was improving my technical abilities and improving my beats. But it wasn't until I started getting around other producers, other creatives, that's when my production really, really leveled up. Music production, it really is quite a collaborative process. So definitely work with other musicians, work with producers, work with artists. When you do this, ideas come to life that maybe you probably wouldn't have thought of alone because you just don't have that taste that the other person has or you don't think the same way they do when it comes to creation. Not only that, but you can learn so much just by sitting down and watching another producer get to work. You can get like a little insight into their process and the way they think. Maybe even pick up a little tip or a little trick. So many times I thought, okay, I know Logic Pro X at the back of my hand. Then I'll get around another Logic Pro X user and then they'll do just one quick little shortcut and I'll be like, damn, I've never used that shortcut before. And now that's just another thing in my tool bag. Not only that, but also if you're collaborating with other people, then you're also tapping into their network too. For example, if I'm making a beat and I'm making a beat with another producer, I can send it out to my rappers that I work with, they can send it out to their rappers that they work with, and more opportunities can come that way. Which leads me to my next point. What does producers like Metro Boomin, Tay Heath, Wheezy have in common? They worked very closely with an artist to help build their sound. So when you're working with artists, it usually pushes you as a producer because you go from just making the beat to now making songs and that's like a whole new skill set in itself. You start to pick up on little things such as like overproducing. When you're working with an artist, you realize sometimes you might just have to strip a lot of things back so they have a lot of room to be able to do their thing on it. But also other skills as well, from learning how to deal with people's energies in the studio, learning how to get the best out of an artist, what makes them tick, what they like, what they don't like, maybe even engineering and recording vocals. All these micro skills are just stacking up to make you a way more complete producer. And now these producers have been able to build careers off of the back of their artists blowing up. One thing I would say though, is definitely choose wisely. In the beginning, maybe you don't have a lot of artists around you, so you just kind of work with whoever is around you. And that's good, definitely get your hours and your skills up. But you definitely want to try and find an artist that you actually believe in. Not only someone who just has talent, but has work ethic as well and has a vision. Now, once you've created your music, don't just keep it to yourself. Share your music with the world. In 2024, attention is very, very important. And it doesn't matter what direction that you want to take your music, whether that's selling beats online 
or trying to get placements with artists. At the end of the day, you're gonna need an audience, a group of people to come and listen to your music. So once you've created your music, try and find a way to get out there. You can upload your beats or your music to SoundCloud, streaming platforms like Spotify, and start building your online presence and your community. Honestly, I've been guilty of this as well, of just creating tons and tons of beats and just leaving them on my laptop, leaving them on my hard drive to kind of rot away. But honestly, there's no good having music and just sitting on it because the art is not finished until it is given. A common thing I will hear is, well, I'm just not ready to put myself out there. I'm not ready to release. And I fully understand that. Once you feel confident in your levels and your ability and you've got an idea of what you wanna do, then definitely go for it. But at the same time, sharing your musical journey is completely fine as well. If you go back to my earliest videos on this channel from 2017 and you take a listen, you're gonna see that the quality just wasn't there. But yeah, I'll still put my videos out even though they weren't slapping just to try and build some buzz for myself. But you can go all the way back and see the progression up until present day today. And you can see my ups and downs along the journey. Take a look at a producer called Sean C. Over the last year, he's probably gained about 2 million followers on TikTok. And he created a series where he was just learning how to make beats, learning how to make Brazilian funk and yeet style beats. <laughs> Through that series, he's been able to build himself a platform, taking himself from a beginner to now an expert, and now become I Show Speed's main producer. So there's nothing wrong with sharing your music, even if you're a beginner, because people are definitely interested and invested in the journey. I hope you found this video useful and you enjoy your journey too. I'm rooting for you. And hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.